have to admit I'm not exactly what you call a swinging single. Well, it's never too late, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm waiting for the big band sound to come back. This um, disco stuff's not my style. I'm sorry, Mitch, but you can't use that excuse. Disco's been dead for years. It has. You mean it's safe now? <laughs> I can make my move? Yeah. <laughs> well, now, I'm serious, Terry. You're one of the most level-headed women I know. I'd like your advice. You know Millie Brubaker down to County Hall of Records? Sure. Well, I've been kind of wondering, maybe... Mm, Mitch, she'd be perfect. Do it. <laughs> Funny thing, I didn't sleep last night. The Ritz, it ain't. The mattress felt like it had a sack of potatoes underneath it. You see, you had a mattress. My cell was so small, I couldn't even turn around. You had your own cell? Well, yeah. Threw me in the drunk tank. The guy next to me was screaming all night long. Had spiders crawling out of his skin. Oh, wow, I bet he was tripping. Did he drop some acid? Far out. Far out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Real neat. What do you think this is? Some sort of a game? A big joke? Why didn't you call your folks or somebody to get you out of here? My parents were on vacation. They find out about this. I even hate to think. Why didn't you call your aunt or that brother-in-law you told me about? I tried everybody I could think of. Nobody was home. You should call the Davidsons. You're a dumb chick, you know that? A really dumb chick. I'm in enough trouble with them as it is. Why'd you do it, Jill? Why'd you go and do it? I didn't think I was gonna get caught. Oh, great, terrific. I didn't think I was gonna get caught. Like I said, a really dumb chick. You rip off some stupid lipstick and some eye stuff and I get thrown in a slammer. What'd you do it for? To get all dolled up for Peter? Oh, sure. Don't be a creep. Or maybe you just wanted to look good for your mug shots. Why don't you take your ugly mug and shove it? You know what they think? That I was in on the whole thing. A conspiracy, they said. Transporting stolen merchandise. You gotta tell them, Jill. Why should I help you? Because you know how it happened. OK, that's enough. Cut it out. You're going to have to come back to your cell now. Gladly. Jill, you've got to tell him. All right, let's take another look at that throat. Ah. Uh, Why is it you guys can't think of anything more original than ah, something like hit five or uh, take it from here? Or There's whatever. a very good reason for that, my dear. A well-proven scientific fact. <clears throat> what? It works. When did you say all this flared up? About two days ago. I mean, right before I was supposed to start rehearsals. Can you believe that one? You ever had this problem before? <laughs> no. I mean, I never lost my throat and my voice like that before. Have you had a cold, runny nose, cough? No. I thought that it was a cold, too, but it's, it's just my voice. <laughs> of course, I took every cold remedy known to mankind just to be safe. And what was it your doctor prescribed? Um, it's a throat spray. <laughs> antiseptic, I think he said. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very good. Well, just take it easy. Try not to use your voice more than absolutely necessary and use this spray four times a day, just like he said. That's it? I mean, that's all that you can do? For well, now, it's the best thing. You should be over this in no time. Angel, just, just forget about the rehearsals for a while. I mean, the main thing is getting you well. Uh, would you mind waiting in the reception area for a moment? I need to talk to Dave. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Anytime. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute, Angel. No problem. <coughs> Thanks again. Take care. I've got thousands tied up in that girl. Musicians, Ed. Studio time. The meter's ticking every second. She's fine. The girl's fine. Oh, come on. You heard her. She sounds like she's been swallowing razor blades. Physically, there's not a thing wrong with her. 
It's all in her mind. All in her head? You mean to tell me she's been putting this on? I ought to grab her by her phony little sore throat and strangle some sense into her. Calm down, Dave. She's not faking it. That laryngitis is as real to her as if she had a serious strep infection. What, opening night jitters? Sure. Oh. Nerves, the tension, fear. Sometimes the body reacts. Oh, it's very real. All too real for the patient. But not Becky. I know that girl. Nothing rattles her. And it just doesn't figure. I mean, that girl wants success so bad, I can feel that. No. Sometimes what we want up here is not always what we want down here. What about her home life? She married, got a boyfriend. Uh, th that is a problem. The, the chick's married to a real gorilla. I got my PR guy working on it now, round the clock. Like I can't have my new star married. It ruins the image. Now what's he think about all this? The gorilla? He's dead set against it. Hmm. Jealousy, probably. Well, you know, he wants her home, cooking, cleaning, making babies, the usual well, stuff. Well, that could be your problem right there. It doesn't take a degree in psychiatry to figure out that there's a conflict in Becky's life. A conflict she may not want to admit, even to herself. A conflict between her career and that, that Neanderthal? No. She may love him. Did you ever think of that? Becky loves music. But can she love both? Now, that's a problem she's going to have to decide sooner or later. Yeah, well, later ain't gonna hack it. I got obligations. Oh, I suppose I could prescribe something else for her, but it would only be a placebo. There's really nothing medical science can do for her. Oh, come on, Doc. From what you've told me and from what I've seen of cases like this, I'd say the best thing for you to do is take the pressure off. It might change her perspective. Well, it couldn't hurt. I mean, it might do the trick. I'll take her out on the town tonight. Show her off a little bit. Now let her be seen, not heard. Don't let her use her voice. All right, Just all right. let her relax. All right, all right. Who knows? Sometimes cases like this clear up like that. <laughs> all right, Ed. Thank you. You've been very helpful. Mitch, come on in. It's official now what we've been waiting for. The house is yours, uncontestably. It to have and to hold, to hedge and to mow. Yeah, to dust and to mop from this day forward. Do I detect a note of uh, discouragement there? I know, Mitch. This is what we've been hoping, praying for. Well, now, justice has finally been served, Terry. Well, justice or not, what am I supposed to do with two houses? Well, now, I will admit that's not a problem that many people face. Even this house is too big for just me and Peter. Oh, there are so many memories here. Sometimes I think we'd be better off if we just moved into an apartment or someplace smaller where I wouldn't feel so lonely. I know how you feel, Terry. I rattle around that monstrosity of house of mine like a, like a ping-pong ball in the Astrodome. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's not the space. It's just the memories. Oh, sometimes I think I'm almost over this. I, I don't know, then something hits me and it... It's just like it happened yesterday. Terry, I know you're probably sick and tired of people telling you this, but uh, the pain will pass. It, you know, you'll rebuild your life in time. Just open yourself to people. Date again. Well? Well, you're right, Mitch. I am sick of hearing that from people. Oh, it's too soon for me to think about that. I understand. Besides, you're a fine one to talk. You've been one of Kingsley's most dedicated bachelors for the past seven years. Well, no, I'm not exactly what you call a swinging single. Well, it's never too late, you know. No, I'm waiting for the big band sound to come back. Uh, that uh, disco's not my style. Oh, well, excuse me, Mitch, but you're a little bit too late for that. Disco's been dead for years. It has. Mm -hmm. You mean it's safe now? I can come out and make my move? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I'm... 
I'm half serious, Terry. You're one of the most level-headed women that I know, and I need your advice. Do you know um, Millie Brubaker? She's down at the uh, County Hall Records. Sure. Well, I was kind of thinking that... Oh, Mitch, she'd be perfect. Do it. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Jeff, come on in. Thanks. Hi, Mitch. Afternoon, Jeff. Well, we found Jill. She's in jail. Oh, no. What happened? She got picked up for shoplifting. Gary was with her. Oh. They had Peter's car. Oh, Jeff, I'm so sorry. Oh, I was afraid something like this was going to happen. I don't know. Brew Baker said that, that Peter's car was impounded. Look, if there is anything that I can do. Well, Liz and I are going to go down there tonight. I don't know, Mitch. It's an open and shut case. She got caught red-handed. Oh, that poor child. Child? She knew what she was getting into. She's just a mixed-up kid. Well, that's just it, Terry. She's not a kid anymore. And the sooner she quits acting like one, the better. For her sake. Look, I better go. Liz is waiting for me. Um, would you uh, would you tell Peter about his car? Brubaker said it'll be released in the morning. Okay, I'll tell him. And let me know how it goes with Jill. Okay, I'll see you later, Mitch. Bye. I just wish there was some way to reach her. Well, knowing you, if there's a way, you'll find it. Jill, have a seat. I'm going to ask you some questions. I don't have to answer any of your questions. You said so yourself. Anything I say or do can be used against me in a court of law. <laughs> Smart chick. Real hip. Watches a lot of cops. Okay, shows. Gary, that's enough. You're right, Jill. I explained that to you earlier, but we got to know what happened last night. You're going to make it a lot easier on all of us if you just tell us about it. We were just driving around... In Peter and... Davidson's car. Yes, it was Peter's car. She said she was hungry, so we stopped at this store. I wanted to get something to eat. Big deal. We drove off, and the next thing I know, the cops are all over us. I didn't know what was going on. Manager must have tipped them off. Is that true, Jill? Did Gary know you were going to shoplift? Uh, how could he? I wasn't planning it. I don't know why I grabbed that stuff. This is real important, Jill. Are you sure he had no idea what your intentions were before you walked into that store? He didn't know anything. It wasn't a conspiracy or whatever. Okay, okay, fine. Gary, you can go. Officer? Look. Thanks. Sure, creep. Anytime. Look, I answered your questions. Can I go now? Look, you may not know it, but I'm trying to help you. Now, I went to see the Cummins today. I told them what happened. They're going to come here and see you tonight. You're a big help. It's not as if the Cummings are my parents or anything. What I do is none of their business. Well, from what I understand, they've done quite a lot for you. And they were worried sick about you. Leave me alone. I don't have to listen to this. I have my rights. You told me so yourself. Well, if this shopkeeper decides to prosecute, you're going to have precious few rights. Officer, I want you to think about that. You're going to have plenty of time. Take her to her cell. Okay, let's go. The, 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 the music, the singers, they all start clicking. It's a high like you've never experienced. You know, I feel better. I mean, my voice is even... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah. Just, just don't rush anything, okay? <laughs> you know, you're not holding anything back from me about what the doctor said, are you? Ed's a very good friend of mine. Uh, I have a lot of respect for his opinion. So what did he say? He said you're fine. Perfectly healthy. <laughs> but what about my voice? Tension, he said. Nerves. Come on. You know me better than that. Too much pressure at home, Becky. It's as simple as that. Now, I tend to agree with him. Now, you watch. The, the more time you spend away from Russ, the better you're going to feel. I do feel better. Wait till you see the things I got planned for you this evening. <laughs> really, it's, it's been wonderful, <clears throat> David, but I think that hey, maybe hey, I should... Hey, the doctor said you're supposed to relax, have a good time, enjoy yourself. 
as your manager, that's the least that I can do for you. But I really am tired. I got the perfect remedy, trust me. First thing we're gonna do is head over to uh, Marv Henson's. The Marv, you know Marv Henson? <laughs> huh? He's an old buddy of mine, almost as big as I am. Oh, is this a little friendly competition? Oh, for right now, yeah. He's throwing a little shindig, nothing fancy, just uh, two or three hundred of his nearest Dave. and dearest <laughs> friends. <laughs> I know there's gonna be a lot of people there that I want you to meet. After that, we go to Studio 54. I got a table right up front for us. I wanna show you off a little bit. You look gorgeous tonight, Angel. That dress is dynamite. I've got exquisite taste, if I say so myself. I love it. Hey, David, thanks for everything. It's like I said, I've got exquisite taste. In clothes, in music, and in women. I know class when I see it. A toast to you, Angel, and your future. <laughs> Just on my way upstairs, check on a case. I thought I'd pay a little visit. Come on in, sit down, sit down. I see you're up to your triceps and triplicates. Yeah, it's been quite a day. Uh, that girl you're holding for um, shoplifting, you still holding her? She's still here. Oh. Poor kid. Aye. It seems like she's fighting the whole world. Yeah, from what I hear, every time someone tries to do something nice for her, she just acts like a snapping turtle. Well, she's crawled back in her shell for now. <laughs> Sometimes, Mitch, the more I see, the less I understand. Yeah, I know what you mean. I thought I'd witnessed every kind of human behavior, but uh, that ordeal with Nancy Lawson gave me pause. She's something else, all right. But the way you handled her eviction, oh, I gotta hand it to you, John. You had me impressed. Well, I uh, guess I'll be running along. Oh, uh, by the way, How's your mother doing? She's fine. Mm. I'm supposed to have dinner with her tonight, but uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to make it. No, oh, it's a shame. She's a mighty fine lady. And uh, very much appreciated by the folks upstairs, I understand. I have to admit, I am real proud of her. Mm. Well, she's lucky to have such a fine son. You must take very mm. good care of her. Well, hardly. If anything, she's the one that's taking care of me. She called me this morning and said, uh, now you've got to make an appointment with the dentist. <laughs> I wish she'd find somebody else to fuss over sometimes. Well, anyone in particular? Well, I mean, she has a date uh, now and then, but uh, nobody special or not now. Attractive woman like that, I find that rather hard to believe. Well, actually, there is. She's been making these real nice comments about this one very fine southern gentleman that comes up into the Hall of Records every now and then. Is that right? That right, my God. Mitch, you wouldn't be thinking about asking her out, would you? Me? Man of my age? There's something in your eye. It's a twinkle, and I don't think I've seen it there before. Foolishness. Jill, <laughs> <laughs> are you all right? Did you get me out of here? No. No? We've come to see you. I want to get out of this dump. This place is crummy. I know, but we haven't checked into it yet. Great. Well, maybe we would have been more on top of things if you'd called us last night. I didn't want to bother you. We were worried about you. Sure, I bet. Jill, why is it so hard for you to accept the fact that we care about you? I don't want you to care about me. I must admit that you've done your best to make it difficult. You know, you're in some very serious trouble, young lady. I ripped off a couple of bucks worth of stuff, and I got caught. I must be losing my touch. You must be losing your mind. It is. I'm sorry, Jeff, but that kind of attitude. Why did you do it? I don't know. For kicks, I guess. For kicks? Is that why you got Jenny to lie for you? What? You know what she's talking about, Jill. Jenny told us all about it. OK, so I broke the lamp. What's the difference? The difference is you got her to lie. I'm sitting here on death's row, and you're worried about some stupid lamp. You know very well it is not the lamp. I couldn't care less about the lamp. What bothers me is the deception. What deception? I told one little white lie. Big D. 
Jill. Jill, that's exactly the attitude that got you in this place. So what? I'd like to stay here. At least the food's better. And they give me some peace once in a while. Jill, we have tried. We really have. We took you into our home, our hearts. We, we, we treated you like family. Honey, don't say something you're going to regret. I don't know what your game is, and I don't care. It was all your idea. I never did get it. What did you want anyway? Want? We were just trying to help you. I didn't need your help then, and I don't need it now. All right, that's about enough. Come on, Liz, let's go. I can take care of myself without your help. All right, if that's the way you want it. You're doing such a fine job. I didn't want your help. I don't need your help. 